The X Factor is back as new regions rotate into Earth view from the sun's far side with big solar flares, big solar storms, and the promise of more. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com dot edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Right on cue, activity from our star picks up in a big way with new active regions rotating into Earth view and big solar flares to boot. But more about that in a minute. First, let's take a look at our Earth-facing disk. Back on the 17th and 18th, we had kind of a two-filament launch. First one launches to the north, and then a big snake-like filament slingshots its way off of the Earth-facing disk. It looks like the structure is going to go west of Earth mainly, but we might get a glancing blow. Probably not going to be that big of an impact, though. However, as we continue taking a look at the disk, look to the east limb. You can see a lot of activity going on. Well, that is region 3341, even before before it rotated into Earth view, but once it did, it says hello in a big way. Bam! Right there on the 20th, it fires an X 1.1 class flare and a big solar storm. This caused an R3 level radio blackout on Earth's day side. And believe it or not, not only did it affect all of the amateur radio operators, but we had big radio bursts associated with it as well. In fact, as we take a look, we can actually see uh, from Germany to Arecibo to Alaska, even at Owens Valley, California, we saw the big radio bursts. In fact, as we take a closer look at Owens Valley, you can see that radio burst goes up to 12 gigahertz, if not 14 gigahertz. Oh my goodness, this affects not only amateur radio operators, but satellites and space traffic as well. If you had issues with DirecTV or Sirius uh, XM or GPS or, or even satellite phones, all of this can be affected when you have, uh, even Starlink can be affected when you have radio bursts of this magnitude. And this is just the beginning for this particular active region. We do have about nine days for this region to rotate completely off of the Earth-facing disk, so it's going to be with us for a while. Luckily, it looks like it's beginning to stabilize since that X-class flare. However, it is still a solar storm producer, so we're going to have to keep our eyes on it. Meanwhile, we do have a few other filaments and things that could be erupting at any moment, so we could get some Earth-directed storms here pretty quickly. And if you look to the east limb, there is another region that's going to be rotating into Earth view here over the next couple days that is also a big flare player and solar storm producer. So it looks like more is coming. So if you are an amateur radio operator and you're dealing with field day and things don't seem to be working right with your equipment, it may not be your rig. It may be the sun. Now, taking a look at the sun a little bit from the far side, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at our sun just a tiny bit from the side. And as you take a look at the east limb in Stereo's view, look down in the south, and you can see region 3341 rotating into view on the 20th. Bam! Right there, that's when it fires that X 1.1 flare, and it launches a pretty massive solar storm that's going to be heading mainly, mainly towards stereo. However, it looks from the coronagraphs that we might actually get a slight glancing blow at Earth. It's kind of hard to tell. If that happens, it will be like maybe midday on the 23rd, possibly into the 24th. However, look up in the north. Look at on the 21st. Wham! Right there. Do you see that? That's another big solar storm launching from that region in the north that hasn't rotated yet into view. This is another expected active region, and it's likely a big flare player as well as a solar storm producer. So what this means is that in the coming week, we could be having uh, big chances for big solar storms from two big, big flare players as well as lots of radio blackouts, and that's likely going to continue in through this upcoming week and possibly into next before things calm down. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter, and by the 27th, the moon will be about 62% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, well, you're going to have this bright companion. So you're going to need to check your local rise and set times.
Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still under the influence of that fast solar wind from those coronal holes that have been moving through the Earth's strike zone, but the influence is finally beginning to wane. On top of that, we do have a couple sideswiping solar storms, one that should be sideswiping us about now and another one that should be sideswiping us within about the 23rd or the 24th. So conditions are going to be a little bit strange. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions, but they are giving us about a 50% chance of a major storm. And this is going to be, you know, waning as we get through the 24th into the 25th. But remember, because we have so many filament eru uh, potential eruptions on the Earth facing disk, these conditions could change very, very quickly. Now, at mid latitudes, we're not expecting nearly so much. We're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of a minor storm. Again, around the 23rd, possibly into the 24th, but by the 25th, things should settle back down. But remember, again, Aurora photographers, there's a lot of potential for big Earth-directed solar storms on the disk this week. So this could, uh, these conditions could easily change very, very quickly. Switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we do have a lot of active regions in Earth view, including region 3341 that fired that big X-class flare just the other day. But this is managing to boost that solar flux. We're up into the 170s right now. We could be into the 180s over the next couple days and possibly into the 190s by the end of the week when the new regions begin to rotate into Earth view. However, this is causing a lot of noise on the bands. We're sitting uh, at the moderate noise level for the day side right now on the radio bands. NOAA's giving us about a 40% chance of M-class flares at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout. Out. This could easily last over the next three days and possibly the rest of the week, including through the weekend. So amateur radio operators for field day, you know, you're going to be dealing with these big radio blackouts. Sadly, we also have about a 10% chance of an R3 level radio blackout. That's the X-class flares. And that's also going to last throughout this week. And these, ri these risks may rise just a little bit as we get a better look at the new region that's going to be rotating into Earthview. So again, field day uh, participants, you're going to have to just hang in there and possibly work the bands at night if the noise on the bands during the day is just too much. Switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is in the green this week. We are sitting at the D1 normal range for aviators, which is the same as the S0 quiet levels. In fact, NOAA is only giving us about a 5% chance of a radiation storm this over the next three days. And as the week progresses, we might see that rise just a little bit because we have some new regions rotating into Earth view and some old regions rotating to the west limb. But for the most part, you frequent flyers and air crew, it looks like everything is in the green, but just be sure to check those ICAO advisories for any changes. So our sun kicks up the space weather activity by a bunch this week. We have region 3341 that we're keeping our eyes on. It's already fired an X-class flare and now it's fired a near M5 flare. So radio blackouts are definitely a thing that are that's going to continue. So amateur radio operators, I know you've got field day weekend. Well, you're going to be having to deal with these radio blackouts as well. So work through them as best as you can. Now, aurora photographers, well, you know, we actually have multiple solar storms that are going to be grazing Earth. We have one, well, we had one that grazed us to the west. Now we've got one that's going to graze us to the east on the 24th. And now another one that's going to be grazing us likely to the south sometime early next week. But nothing is totally Earth directed yet, but that could very well change. Region 3341 has got maybe another day or two before it rotates into the Earth strike zone. And then if it lets loose, it will definitely be an Earth directed solar storm. So we could get some decent aurora. So just keep your batteries charged and keep your fingers crossed that we could get a good show. And now you GPS users, well, you know, things are okay. They're on the day side, you're kind of dealing with these radio blackouts, which makes dawn and dusk awfully tough to get decent GPS reception. But Earth's night side's not too bad right now because we don't have any big solar storms that are causing a lot of aurora just at high latitudes. So as long as you stay away from dawn and dusk and away from aurora at high latitudes, your uh, GPS reception should be pretty decent. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.